Hey guys, I'm Dave. Welcome to my channel. In the video today, I'm going to show you a cool geometric text effect that has a little bit of depth to it. It's inspired by the book cover for Ready Player Two. If you've seen this, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'll put it up on the screen now. Um, very neat text effect, a little bit of gradient, a little bit of shadow in there that creates depth. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of variations that you can apply to this where you start with your core letter form and then start to modify it, add a couple more colors and add a couple more layers. A lot of variables here. The only limit is your own creativity. So I'm going to show you the core skills and where you take it is up to you. Let's go jump into Illustrator and get started. Okay, here we are in Illustrator. Let's get started. So you can go up to the menu and create a new document here with File New, or you could use the key command, Command N. Pulls up your new document window. Today, I'm not building the end product. I'm just working in a rough document that I'll build all my characters in. So 20 inch by 30 inch canvas should give me enough room. Hit Create. And then when I'm building characters like this, I want them to remain consistent. So having a good guide set up, a good grid system, is going to be key to having everything remain consistent. So I'm going to do that today by using the grid tool. So it's over here underneath the line segment tool. In your toolbar, whenever you see this little triangle in the bottom corner, it means that there's tools stacked underneath. So if you click and hold, it reveals all of the other tools that are underneath there. So we're going to go to the rectangular grid tool and we will click on our canvas to pull up the options. Now this has already got my options from earlier. I'm going to have all my characters start out as three inch by three inch squares. I'm going to have five vertical and horizontal dividers, which will give me six rows and six columns and hit OK. So now this is the basis for our characters today, and we're going to use this to keep everything consistent. I'm not going to build the full alphabet for you here in this video because that would take far too long, but I'm going to show you a couple characters and you should get the gist of it. So let's take this using our regular selection tool and drag out a copy. So if you hold down Option, you see that arrow changes. It means that we're gonna create a copy. We're not just gonna move this grid, we're creating a copy of it as it moves along. And then if you hold Shift, it constrains it on either a 45 degree angle, a horizontal or vertical plane. So let's drag it out to about here. And then we're gonna use my favorite key command, which is Transform Again, which repeats that transformation. And that will give us a couple more copies the more times we press it. And we're going to get this nice setup here for all of our letters that we're going to build today. And then obviously, I would be building a lot more. I'd be building the full alphabet. So I would be dragging out copies all the way down to fill up the page. So now what I'm going to do with these grids is I'm going to turn them into guides. If you select all with Command A, you put all these grids in your selection and then hit Command 5, which turns them into guides. So now you can't modify them anymore, they're locked, and they're gonna give you this nice grid system for building your letters on top of it. So there we go. Okay, so now we've got our guides and grid all set up. The next thing I wanna do is define a global color swatch. So I've picked a teal. Um, feel free to pick any color you want for this project, but I thought that the teal was gonna look cool to start with. And then go into your swatches. Now, you've got this color active, what you'll need to do is go up to the top right corner, the options, and click New Swatch. Here you can name the swatch. We're going to name it Main Color. And make sure that you've got Global turned on. Now what's going to happen is this swatch is now a global swatch. It's different from the main swatches that are up here. And what this means is that if you have instances of this color throughout your document, you could have hundreds of them. If you come back here to the swatch, double click on it and edit it, all instances of that color inside of the document will automatically update. So it's a neat way for these letters to become a lot more useful. You can build them once and then just quickly update them. So I like that teal, let's stick with it to start with. Okay, so we've got our color palette defined, we've got our grid set up, now it's time to start building these characters. And there's lots of different methods to go about doing this, but I'm gonna use a combination of the circle tool or the ellipse tool, the rectangle tool, and the pen tool to create these letters. So with our grid set up, we can use the pen tool to start. We can click on the bottom corner anchor up here, click on the middle, 
click on this bottom corner and then complete the path. That little circle there means that the path will be completed. And we have ourselves a triangle, which in this case will be the basis of our letter A. Now to create the layered effect, we need to create a slice off this path. So I can use the pen tool and I can roughly eyeball a slice and use the pathfinder but I want all my angles to match. I want everything to be consistent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this main triangle. I'm gonna paste it in front, Command F, and now it's, it's pasted on top of the original path and in the exact same location. And then I'm gonna hold Shift to constrain this down on a 45 degree angle. And I'm just gonna eyeball a spot that I like. About there, it looks about halfway. Now I'm going to paste another copy of that triangle back on top. I'm gonna to hold shift to select this secondary triangle that's down here. And I'm gonna to go to my Pathfinder palette and use the intersect option to intersect those two paths. So where they both sat on top of, this is the intersection between those two. So if we look in outline mode, Command Y, we turn our guides off. We can see that we've got the small triangle sitting on top of the big triangle. And right now you can't see anything there because there's there's no gradient layer. So that's the next step that we need to add is a gradient that will act as the shadow underneath this path. So with this triangle selected, you can copy it again, paste it in front, and now there's a sandwich of three layers. There's two of the large triangles and one small triangle. Let's undo that, Command Z. And we're gonna pick up the upper large triangle and we're going to add an, a gradient to it. So let's go and add a linear gradient. By default, this node here would have an opacity of 100%, but because I've worked on this document before, it's left the last characteristics on here, so it, it's reduced to zero, so only the black is gonna show up. And then let's change this transparency to a multiply blending mode. And now we get this black area of the gradient multiplying on top of the teal color. And this is, a, this is a cool effect too, but what we want to do is kind of create a shadow. So we want this gradient to match the angle of this shape. So to figure out what that angle is, because we're not dealing with a 45 or 90, one of the easier angles to eyeball, let's use the measure tool. So it's hidden underneath the eyedropper. And if you click on the bottom point here, your info readout pops up and it will snap to the top corner. And we can see that this triangle here is at an angle of 116.565 degrees. Now, that's not the angle that we're gonna need to enter into our gradient. We need to subtract 90 from that. So that leaves us with an angle of 26.565. And that's what we're gonna need to enter into the angle portion over here on our gradient. So hopefully I can remember that correctly. I think it was 26.565. And it was the correct angle, but we just need to switch the position of our nodes here. So you can just drag them from either side. Sometimes that's quicker than changing the, the color of each node. So now we could just play with this here and the position of the black, we want it to be hidden underneath that original slice so that you don't see the full effect of the black being multiplied on top of the teal. But you can play around with this and you're gonna wanna keep it consistent throughout your entire project so that the shadow doesn't look darker on some characters than it does on others. So just like that, we've created the letter A for this for this project. And I think that's, this looks pretty neat. We've got the top slice that hides the gradient and it creates this shadow effect underneath. And then if you pull that off to the side, you can see it's just, it's a sandwich of three layers. You've got top slice, middle gradient, and the bottom character. Now you can also repeat this process and, and create multiple slices. I've done that in a few, few cases, but Today, let's just go with one slice per character. So there's our letter A. When I'm com complete with a letter, I'll grab all the elements and group them together with Command G. And because we're dealing with a very geometric form, there's gonna be a lot of letters that are gonna be repeatable. So in this case, I took the A um, down to my document to the right spot. It's obviously not this one, but I rotated it and the A became 
my V, which is a quick way of building this thing efficiently. There's gonna be a lot of other instances like that where you're gonna be able to repeat shapes and use them throughout your document. So the next letter we're gonna to build today is going to be the letter B. So let's start with an ellipse. L on the keyboard pulls up the ellipse tool. Let's start in our top corner, holding shift to constrain to make sure that we get a perfect circle. Let's go to our middle point here and create that circle. Let's drag out a copy of that down to there. And then let's use the rectangle tool and create a rectangle all the way down to there. And just like that, we've got a really square, blocky, geometric B. Now for the slice on this, it's up to you how you want to uh, achieve it. You can do a 45 degree angle slice and a 45 degree gradient. Um, but I think in this case, what I'll do is I'll find the halfway point, create a new rectangle, and that will constitute my top slice. I'm then gonna copy the full layer on the bottom and paste in front a copy. And I'll use my eyedropper tool to pick up the gradient over here. And then this is what I mentioned earlier about trying to keep the look of the shadows consistent. Just based on the position and size and everything here, the gradient is a little bit darker looking. And we can just adjust that by sliding these nodes over and finding a spot that visually looks similar to our first letter. So I like the way that looks. Uh, maybe I can go a little bit darker. That looks pretty cool. And let's group that together. And then let's do a letter C. So let's pull up the ellipse tool again, start from the middle point, holding option and shift. We create a circle here. That's the full size of our grid. We can pick up our global color palette and we can add a rectangle on this side. And that could be a letter C if you'd like, or if you want it to be a little bit more literal, we can add in one more uh, section in the middle. So let's use the ellipse tool and mathematically, if you click on the center, we can add in a half inch by half inch circle, which happens to be the same size as our grid, one grid section here. We can find the center point and then we can do the same thing with a square, add in a half inch by half inch square and then we can position this just off the middle and we can just extend it out like that now this these two shapes what we're going to do is we're going to have all of these elements selected and we're going to use the subtract function so these two shapes are on top of our original shape and then if we're going to use the minus front anything that was in front gets subtracted so that could be our letter c and then obviously we're gonna repeat the slice that I talked about and the gradient and we'll be done with that. So here's the final alphabet that I built. I talked about working with it after the fact. So because I grouped everything, it's easy to pick up the individual letters, drag off copies to the side and to make a word. So for this example, let's make the word make. And then I've got them all staggered here. You could, you could intentionally create like a cascade of letters, but I like to see them aligned. So with everything selected, you can use the align palette up here, vertically align them center, and then you can see the spacing is a bit off. So because they're squares, they'll distribute evenly if you use horizontal distribute center. If you had some characters that were a little bit wider or narrower, that might not work for you as much, and you might need to go in and manually adjust them. So here's a cool little word that we've created out of our alphabet. The other thing that I suggested that you could do is to start to create a two-tone effect. So right now this is um, all the single color, which again, you can adjust using the global swatches if you don't like this color. You can come in and change this to something else, like a purple, and everything in your document will update accordingly. So to add a second color, I just undid that purple change. I'm gonna use the direct selection arrow, A on the keyboard pulls that up. And I'm gonna pick up just these top slices. So these are all these items are grouped. If you clicked on the letter and tried to change a color, you would change all three layers. But by using the direct selection arrow and only picking up the top slice, you're only gonna affect that, that shape. And then go to new swatch, 
create a new color, whatever you want it to be, hit OK, and now you create a two-tone effect in just those letters off to the side here. And again, like everything else, you can adjust it to a point where you're happy with it, maybe make it lighter on the top, and I think that looks pretty cool. So there we go. Hopefully uh, you'll find something useful inside this video. I covered a few techniques. It wasn't too crazy, but uh, hopefully you followed along. If you made it to this point, I'd really appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. The support really does mean a lot. Anyway, I'm gonna go and uh, keep working. Hope you guys do the same. Don't stop creating.